also known as TFS to process SQL Server deployment. In this demo, we'll be learning how to connect to Team Foundation Server, how to navigate to given solution, how to view objects in Solution Explorer, how to view and get SQL Server objects from TFS repository, and number five, finally, how to apply those changes into production. Uh, just so that you know that uh, as far as uh, the documentation, change control documentation concerns, I'm using an Excel. In your organization, it may be an Excel. When I talk about change control uh, documentation, that means a process that document every change that you put in production. So in organizations, sometimes they use third-party tools such as uh, ServiceNow. Um, but uh, in my case, I'm using Excel. Uh, to have all that information that DBA needs to know in order to move the change control to production and document that as well. Here's my Excel sheet. I have used that in my previous demos, but um, right now in this demo, we'll, we'll be uh, concentrating on source and target. As far as source goes, it up here it says server and database. In this demo, it's not the case. It is basically Team Foundation Server as our source and obviously the target is our SQL Server production server. So in Team Foundation, how to read that, if you click on this, right here is the, your team project. And next would be um, if you are not using any other folder um, under your team, uh, team project, then it would be right away your branch. This is your branch and this is your project and this is your solution. So I'm gonna show you that uh, how to uh, connect with Team Foundation Server using Visual Studio and navigate to that solution that uh, change owner provide you that all his solution that he wanted to move to production, all the code reside in this solution. So let's go ahead and connect to Team Founda Foundation Server. This is my server where I have uh, Visual Studio installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my Visual Studio to connect to Team Foundation Server. In my case, I'm using basically Visual Studio 2013. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Visual Studio 2013. Right here is my Visual Studio 2013. In order to connect to TFS, you need to click on Team Explorer right here connect to a Team Foundation Server. If you don't know how to connect to Team Foundation Server, you can watch my video that uh, basically it shows you uh, brand new that how you connect to Team Foundation Server, how you configure your Visual Studio to connect to Team Foundation Server. But I'm already connected to Team, Team Foundation Server. I'm going to go ahead and select Team Project right here. And I'm going to show you one more time that how to connect to Team Foundation Server. Right here is my uh, Tech Brothers TFS, but if you don't have anything, you can click on Server and click on Add right here. And you can put URL of your TFS. In my case, it's Tech Brothers TFS, and this is the port 8080 and backslash TFS. You can just put the URL or the name of the server or TFS, and rest will be taken care of. If you're using different port for your TFS, you need to change this port number right here. So once you're connected, you can click OK and it'll appear right here. So you can go ahead and once it shows right here in Team Foundation Server list, you can go ahead and close that. And after that, you can select from this drop down menu whatever the T Team Foundation Server you're connected to and it'll bring your Team Foundation. Uh, collection right here in my case I have couple collection one is default collection and other is finance project collection so in my case it is uh, my solution explorer I'm going to go ahead and connect with default collection so I'm gonna go ahead and cl click connect and I double click my team so, um, team project and click on source control as you can see right here is TFS backslash default collection. This is the collection that I just connected to. If you click on uh, this is your team project and let's go back to um, the documentation real quick. So this is the team project that I just connected. Next thing is main is my branch and other is right here is my project and here is the solution. So let's go ahead and navigate to that. 
so I'm going to go ahead and I have right here dev branch main branch and production main branch sometimes also called test branch in a lot of organization and production branch may be called release branch uh, the naming convention may change uh, from organization to organization but basic idea behind the scene is same so I'm going to go ahead and navigate to main branch right here as I can see right here when I navigate to main branch sales order right here exist so I'm go going to go ahead and click on sales order and you will see the three uh, right here one is uh, the folder other is the SLN this is the file that is solution file and this contains all the project information so uh, being a DBA if uh, you get the information that you need to go into sales orders right here that's the project and you need to click double click on the solution explorer so that you will navigate further so if you double click on sales orders and it'll load if you're not if your local path is not set you need to click on it would show you that it's not connected you need to click on um, uh, not connected and provide your local repository path right here what local repository path means that even though it's a, a TFS but it wants when you ch you go to the solution it grabs all the information in that solution and put it in your local repository so that uh, it doesn't have to go back and forth between TFS and your target and it'll all the information will be downloaded it's another way of downloading in TFS in, in normally if you go um, on Internet Explorer and you download something this is exactly uh, back behind the uh, scene it's a, a, a big idea that it's, it's basically downloading everything on your local repositories so there are two repositories in TFS one is local repository and other is uh, exp uh, TFS repository so once you go in solution and explore the solution it actually downloads to your local drive right here so in this case uh, once you do that solution explorer um, and in the in the change control you have one table right here it's a database uh, solution and uh, the solution uh, the change owner wants you to move this new table into our target so once you click on the table right here or whatever the object that he requested once you click on that you will have um, up here the the source control and the team explorer right here and uh, right here is the design code dot sql right here the design of that sql uh, the that object right here is the design if you wanted to look at the t sql this is where you're which you're interested in you can also right click on that particular object and click on view code and it'll show you just the code this is what you're interested in and your change owner wants you to create this table using this script into our destination so what we're going to do in order to uh, move this into production we're going to go ahead and copy this particular code copy so we're gonna go ahead and connect to our production server next and apply uh, this uh, particular script and run this script and after that we're going to verify whether this particular object has created so this is one way this is manual way to grab the information from TFS and applying it into production the other way that is automatic basically if you right click on the uh, on your um, uh, solution right here on your uh, project you will see the option build right here if you have a build set up and it this solution is already built all you need to do is click on publish and this build will already be connected with your target server which might be the production test UAT or whatever the server would be then once you do that uh, all you need to do being a DBA is click on publish and it'll publish to our target server so I'm just saying that that is more of a automation I might put another uh, video but I actually have put already a video call uh, as far as a uh, build concerns that uh, database object how to build a database object and apply to target server if you wanted to look into that you can uh, basically look into the TFS uh, 
playlist and I have put that there but uh, basically being back behind the scene all you would need to do is click on publish right here once the solution is built keep in mind that if you click on publish and solution is not built it's going to give you error that solution needs to be built before you can publish it publish uh, in uh, other words publish means that go ahead and make the changes in your target environment so uh, if if automation is in place all you need to do is click on publish but this in this particular demo all we need to do is grab the uh, um, grab the so uh, all that code from the uh, TFS repository and apply it manually in our production SQL Server production so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to go ahead and connect with my Visual Studio right here <coughs> And let's go back and see what is our target server in our right here this is our target server this is our um, SQL Server instance and this is our database sales order so what we're going to do is basically connect with our target SQL Server and then connect with the t database right here sales orders and apply that script so here's my target SQL Server I'm going to go ahead and connect with our target SQL server and navigate to the sales order database and right here is our sales order database we're gonna go ahead and click new query and right click and paste that script and as you can see that this is the same script that we grabbed from TFS all we need to do is go ahead and run this script this script will go ahead and create a new table called customer underscore information so we're gonna go ahead and execute this and command completed successfully being a DBA you always wanted to make sure verify that whatever the uh, change that you made in production it is basically is in production so in fact it is in production so let's go ahead and click on tables refresh the tables and see if our customer information table is right here so go ahead and expand that and look at the columns and you may wanna just go ahead and see first name last name address and ID so these are the four columns of this table so this table does exist now you can go back in your right here the change control documentation and see if there's anything else needs to be done if there is not if there isn't anything else needs to be done you can send an email to you the change owner and say that your change is completed successfully and you may wanna go ahead and get the screenshot of this particular table right here that uh, in table list and point to this table that this table is created so the change in production is completed please verify I hope this little demo helps